Hello everyone, and welcome to your center's week-long campaign to help you better understand the history of vaccines and how they fight viruses, evaluate the risks associated with the COVID-19 vaccine versus actually contracting COVID-19 as an unvaccinated person, and describe some of the benefits of being vaccinated. This campaign and these videos will help you to become better informed of the risks and benefits associated with taking the shot and help you to make an informed decision. There have been heated discussions between political party members as well as the media on COVID-19 and the various available vaccines. Many of these discussions have not presented a balanced analysis of the risks and benefits associated with the vaccines. In addition, you may have seen several small anti-vaccination lobbyist groups spreading misinformation on the internet for years with negative propaganda against vaccination of all types, including the COVID-19 vaccine. These half-truths and misinformation have caused additional confusion about the COVID-19 vaccine. Finally, many of you may have friends or relatives who have been confused by conspiracy theories circulating on social media and Google. Given the political fighting, the media drama, and the small but extremely vocal anti-vaccination groups, it is not surprising that many people have been hesitant to get vaccinated for COVID-19. Some of you may feel like your decision to not get vaccinated has hardened over the last few months, due to all the noise about the COVID-19 vaccine. We can all agree there is a lot of conflicting information in the public. This week, we ask you to declare your independence from what you have heard in the past and open your mind to the possibility of a new decision. Our goals with these videos over the next few days is to present the facts so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. Viruses have been fighting with humanity for a long time. Over the centuries, millions of men and women and children have been killed by one virus or another. Some of these deadly viruses through history were influenza, polio, measles, chickenpox, and smallpox, just to name a few, many of which we never hear about anymore because a vaccine was developed to fight against the spread and are no longer a threat to humanity. The very first of these vaccines was developed in 1796 by British physician Dr. Edward Jenner to fight against the deadly smallpox virus. When this vaccine was first given to people who had no hope, it saved hundreds of thousands of lives. Since the development of that first vaccine, many more have been created to fight the spread of disease and eliminate these deadly viruses so we can live healthier lives. Viruses and the vaccines that prevent them have been around for almost 300 years, and many people have taken them for granted because the vaccines have reduced illness. Humanity is now facing a new virus called COVID-19, and more importantly, like with many viruses in the past, leading scientists have developed not one, but several vaccines that will help prevent the spread of this disease and minimize the risk of severe illness and possibly death for those who may be exposed. We rarely hear about the viruses of the past anymore because all of the vaccinations that many, if not all of you, have received. Most or all of these preventative vaccines were provided to us when we were children, and yes, they have helped us to grow into healthy adults. As a point of reference, in the United States in 1800, prior to widespread vaccines and other medical advances, only a little more than half of infants made it to their fifth birthday. Without vaccines, many of us would not be alive today. As we think about the COVID-19 vaccination, please reopen your minds to the incredible role vaccines have played in keeping us and our families safe from so many terrible diseases. COVID-19 is just one more of these terrible diseases that may one day be eradicated through vaccination. When a new deadly virus is identified like swine flu, Ebola, or SARS, teams of scientists and physicians focus their efforts to break down the virus and find its weakness. COVID-19 is a coronavirus. Coronaviruses have been around for many years, but have not been virulent enough to cause widespread severe illness in the United States. When COVID-19 hit, our scientists already knew much about the coronavirus because at least two coronaviruses, SARS and MERS, have been identified in 2002 and 2012. While these were contained and these viruses didn't spread to the United States, scientists were already working on potential coronavirus vaccines. Because of this head start, they were able to develop a vaccine for COVID-19 much quicker than with an unknown virus. 
With so many countries around the world experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks, there were many scientists around the world working together on a vaccine. That's how the vaccines were developed so quickly. How did this virus spread so rapidly? Well, it's so easy for people to travel around the world these days, and when you can be on one side of the planet in a matter of hours, it's understandable how the virus can travel along with people from one country to another or one city to another in a matter of days. This global access for people makes it much easier for an airborne virus to spread so quickly from one person to another. This is what happened with COVID-19, as many people unknowingly carried it, exposing the virus to others without even showing signs of illness. COVID-19 also affects people differently. Some get severely ill with a need for ventilators to help them breathe, and some are sick for weeks or months, and some may never fully recover. While the COVID-19 vaccines are helping to minimize the spread, the unvaccinated are now the most vulnerable because the virus continues to mutate to survive. This new COVID-19 wave is being called the pandemic of the unvaccinated. And while the vaccinated can still contract the Delta variant, the likelihood of severe illness is dramatically reduced. If more people would have been vaccinated when the vaccines were first released, the virus may not have had time to mutate into what is now called the Delta variant which is even more contagious and is causing more severe illness for the unvaccinated. Time is of the essence. If we don't reach herd immunity, the virus will have time to mutate and outsmart our vaccines. Without action now, we could be faced with a new variant of this virus that our current vaccines may not be effective. One of the primary reasons many people have been hesitant to take the COVID-19 vaccine is the risk associated with the vaccine. These risks are real, but they are very infrequent. In the videos over the next couple of days, we will review the primary risks that have been identified to the vaccine. In considering these risks, it's important to keep in mind their frequency of occurrence. Essentially, all of the life-threatening risks associated with the vaccines occur at frequencies of less than one in every 100,000 doses. For some perspective, the likelihood of being struck by lightning over your lifetime is about one in 15,000. While we may jump when we hear a loud clap of thunder, we don't spend much time worrying about getting hit by lightning. We engage in activities every day that have a far greater risk than the COVID-19 vaccination. For example, the likelihood of an average American to be involved in an automobile accident over their lifetime is one in 102. As you evaluate the risks of the vaccine, make sure to weigh the frequency of occurrence of severe reactions. In deciding whether to get vaccinated, it's important to compare the risks of getting vaccinated to the risks of not getting vaccinated. Often, we tend to focus only on the risks of doing something like getting a vaccine rather than also fully considering the risks of not getting a vaccine. It is certainly true there are some risks associated with the COVID-19 vaccine. However, to only focus on the risks of the vaccination without fully considering the risks of not getting the vaccination may not result in the most beneficial decision for you. Over the next few days, we will focus on the risks of COVID-19 to the unvaccinated as well as the risks of the vaccine themselves to help you decide. In summary, declare your independence from the politicians, the talking heads, the Facebook stories, and Google rumors. It is uncontestable that historically vaccines have had tremendous health benefits. Many diseases that killed millions in the past are virtually non-existent today. All of us and our families have benefited from vaccines. Please focus on the facts and assume your personal risks associated with the COVID vaccine, as well as your personal risk of contracting COVID-19. Over the next few days, we will have additional videos to describe these risks. I hope all of you will keep an open mind as we review the risks and benefits of COVID-19 vaccination.